Okay, and welcome to the second video of my Let's Play for The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Uh, in the last episode, my camera died, because I don't have a good camera. <coughs> and I was basically about to start explaining parries, but... Um, basically, I finished the, um, the sword thing. Oh, can't see my hearts. Hold on a sec. I know some people are weird like that. Um... Anyway, I uh, finished the sword thing, I got the sword, and then immediately saved and stopped, because I am not doing anything in this except for... I am only playing this file while I am recording. So, but today we're going to go, and we're going to go and so try and save Tetra. If I said that right. Ooh, a rupee. Not worth it. Um, basically, B is sword. I explained pretty much all of the, uh, um, the moves and stuff. Parry is basically when an enemy is going to attack and you hold... L and A gets all flashy and you press A and you win. I don't know, you press A and you basically have you basically do the super cool move and you attack them. Uh, I would recommend pressing A to get around quicker by rolling and cutting pretty much all grass because you never know what you're going to get. Because later on in the game you can get some pretty good stuff. Usually flowers don't hold rupees, but that one did, I guess. Oh, just kidding. I don't usually remember that happening. Okay, just kidding. Don't quote me on that. Oh, come on, this is taking too long. Oh, missed one. Yeah, I recommend getting rupees like I explained in the last video, because... I mean, it's just good to have rupees on you. And you need 201 to buy, to win the game. Okay. More rupees. Cutting down trees. This is a pretty good technique for, um... That's a pretty good technique for uh, clearing grass when there's no enemies around. Other, other than that, though, when there's enemies around, I highly recommend that you don't use it because it's a ho it, it, you will die because you are waiting for um you're basically waiting for um that to do its thing like hold it back and otherwise you're gonna get hurt while you're trying to do that so it's good when there's um that's for grass though for um doing spin attacks though I recommend it when there's like no more than like at least like I don't know, seven enemies surrounding you. Other than that, I wouldn't recommend using a spin attack whatsoever. Or the hurricane move, for that matter. There is one time when the hurricane move is actually pretty awesome. And some of you know what move that is. Or how to get that, too. Um, I'll explain how to get that when I get the thing. Whatever I call it. Oh, knitting stuff. When I get the, um the spoils bag, I will explain how to do that. That should, when you get the spoils bag, the, um, well, I'll explain then, though. When you get the spoils bag, that should be your top priority, getting enough items to be able to get the, uh, um, the hur hurricane move, because, I mean, you really need it for one battle, and that's it. Actually, you do the battle twice, and that's about it. It's a redo battle thing. Now the weird thing about this game is when you're fighting an enemy, if you attack them and they fall on the ground, when they get back up, you still have to wait like two seconds until you're allowed to attack them again, and it's really weird on delay time. It's, I don't know, it's really weird. I'm not going to cut all this grass, but I'll go through it. Hopefully I'll get a couple rupees out of those deal. Like those couple right there. There is another way to do the spin attack, which is if you turn the joystick in a circle, but it's not... I wouldn't recommend it. It's kind of hard to pull off, unless you're experienced with this game. And it's not really good. I would just recommend holding B. I mean, it's good for when you're in a quick situation, like I just did there. Um, other than that, though, but whatever. <coughs> and now we're going to fight some enemies. Okay. Get out of my face. Oh, I feel like I, I think I hurt him in the process too. 
Oh, poop, I shouldn't have done that. Whoops. I could have gone for all that grass while I was avoiding them, but oh well, cutscene. Okay, so another cutscene real quick, but, um, basically, um, I'm just, I want to say here, I just want to say that I'm not going to, uh, read out loud the words and stuff they say, because, like, some people do, because that's kind of annoying, <coughs> and, um, I'm not giving as much time as some people would recommend for, re for our audience members to read it, because I kind of want to get more playtime in, um, but if you have any questions about the story or anything, either go on YouTube and find someone else that's doing it slower, or, <laughs> um, I guess you could comment or something. And Link's gonna be stupid here. Like, here, I'll show you. I'm gonna just skip this, basically. If you didn't read that fast enough, then I'm sorry. I just really want to get through this. I enjoy playing the game, and I know the story well enough to just want to play the game instead. Because I've beaten this, I've beaten this, and I've played through it a couple times. So. Oh, and I think can I? It's not gonna let me. There's a thing when you can press B in most Link games, or just another button in most Link games if you figure out what one it is, and it'll let it so the the words go faster. It's actually the same in Mario games, too. I'll basically expand here in a very shortened version of what's happening. Um, Link's sister Ariel just basically got taken, and Link wants to join the pirates, but the pirates won't let him because you're like a kid. And this guy has gone around the world so many times that, um... All sorts of other types of girls have basically been getting taken, not just Ariel, and um, especially ones with long ears, because I just read that, and because I remember to get this conversation every time. Um, <coughs> um, basically, the bird mistook Ariel for um, tre uh, Tetra. Um, I think I said that right. Um, and now we have to go get her back or something after I get a shield at the Forsaken Fortress, which is, um, I don't know. I don't know if I should count it as a dungeon because, um, cheat books and online, like, walkthroughs count every time you go to the Forsaken Fortress in the game, not voluntary. Ooh, I broke the camera there. Um, not voluntarily. They count it as a dungeon. So, I mean, I guess I'm going to, but... Not really. I guess I'll count it as its own separate total, like, dungeon series. Because you go... Twice? Yeah, twice. I feel like you go there three times, but I don't think you do. I mean, you can go back whenever you want after the second time. And if you don't have the Master Sword after the first time, you can't. Okay, so now I'm going to go get a shield. Which... I know where it is. You just basically want to go up here and go inside Grandma's house. Uh, she's all weirded out because Ariel got taken. Shield's gone. Hop down. And it immediately puts you in another small cutscene. 
Um, basically, he, you're gonna get the shield, she's all sad because Ariel's gone. Um, and she's sad you're kinda leaving too because now she has no one to talk to, basically. And anytime you come back here after the first dungeon, when, when I say first dungeon, I mean, um, Dragon Roost Island, um, not Forsaken Fortress. After, anytime you come back after the first dungeon, um, she is all sad and, like, doesn't, like, recognize you, and she still think like, she still thinks, like, you're gone and, like, Ariel's gone, and she's all weirded out. I believe if you bring her a fairy in a bottle and you release the fairy near her, um, she'll become better, and anytime you visit her after you give her the fairy with an empty bottle, she will give you, um, her, like, super soup stuff, which, like, makes it so you have, like, a shield thing around your health, and you have, like, infinite magic until, until, like, after or something. I don't remember. It wears off eventually after you get hurt enough, but it, like, doubles your health and, like, gives you infinite magic, and I think it might even double your attack, I can't remember. It's pretty good for the 100 Trials if you want to do that. I've never actually beaten the 100 Trials, but I got pretty close. And cutscene. And my camera might die because it only films in 15 to 20 minute increments, so I don't know how long this is going to last. And I've been filming for about 11 minutes and 37 seconds. And now they're all sad because Link is leaving, and now you're going to get in the pirate boat, and you're going to have to do pirate stuff, which a major thing people complain about is the first time you do the pirate trial underneath the decks. Oh, and I will say this now because I totally will forget later, but um, the music for this game is absolutely phenomenal. Like, I don't even care, like, what people say. If some pe- if- I know not many people judge music in this game, but I know there's probably someone out there, and if you're judging music in this game, I do not care. The, this game has amazing music, so be quiet. Especially the boss battles. The boss battles are pretty good. Mulgro's probably the best, which is one of the last bosses in the game. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to jump down here. Wrong way. Nope, that's the right way. And you want to open this door. <coughs> <coughs> oh, now I have the hiccups. Uh, don't try going in there. You can you can go in there later. But basically, it's Zelda's quarters, and this guy won't let you in because you're a man, and they can't even go in because they're men and stuff. Zelda is the- er, oh, excuse me, I am revealing topic here. I said Zelda, whatever. Um, Tetra, excuse me, is basically- is actually the pirate captain, if you didn't know that. Okay, so now he's- summarized version here. He wants you to step on the switch, and he wants you to do this trial because you're bored, basically, and you have nothing to do until you get to the Forsaken Fortress. So, which- and it, you automatically get there after you finish this, so you can take as much time as you need. There's no- it's not going to become a short amount of travel time or anything. Just as, Once you finish this, you're just there. But basically, you want to step on the switch and jump to that. And jumping in this game is you just move off of a ledge and by pushing forward with the control stick and you just hop off. Then you want to do that toward the, uh, the thing there, just like he said. And you can swing back and forth with the control stick and A to let go. And you can also, he doesn't say it here, but you can also hold, I believe it's R to stop swinging and change the direction you're facing. Oh, and if you're holding R and move up and down while you're holding R, you can actually move up and down the rope. And the switch only keeps the stuff up for a little bit. I usually go down and reset, or I usually reset the whole thing because, I don't know, I just feel like if I, I've never have it, done it. But I feel like, um, oh, he's saying it's going to take one year. Um, basically, I feel like, I don't know if that wasted the time, maximum time, because the maximum time is about a minute to maybe, I want to say like two minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds or so. Um, but I think I'm going to try it here. So basically what you want to do is just come up here. Don't swing immediately off of that because you will fall, and I've done it a bazillion times because I always rush this because I hate it. 
There's a second thing you do here too when there's no platforms and you're just swinging to ropes. And that's actually not as bad. And I just... Oh, man. And now he's gonna yell at me. If you start hearing a ticking noise while you're doing this too, that means time's almost out for the platforms being raised up. And... <clears throat> You cannot make that jump from <clears throat> where the switch is. Oh, and if you fall, just reset it, because it's not worth just trying over and having it run time out halfway through. Um, you cannot make this jump from here to the rope, so you have to have these platforms up no matter what. So let's swing twice and just jump, and then I'm going to mess this up. Oh, I thought that was ticking there. That was just the boat creaking get position correctly or you will fall. Oh, that was close. I'm gonna fall. Oh, it didn't fall! Usually this takes me like 10 tries because I always rush it. Not that it's hard, I'm just saying it's... It's just really annoying, so I just rush it and whatever. Okay, so he's gonna give you the spoils bag, which... <coughs> Sorry, I have a cough. Um... Wow, now I can't talk. Um, the spoils bag lets you keep any items that enemies drop. Or, yeah, I said that right. So, um, Dark Nuts, which are big armored people, they drop these, um, things that are... Oh, barrels, hold on. He, they drop these, uh, um, like, belt things with skulls on them. I think it's, it's either 10 or 12, if you get, of them. And you go see the guy that gave you your sword on Outside Island, which is the first island. Um, I don't remember his name. It's like Orlon or something like that. If you, um, bring him, like, it's either 10 or 12, or 11, I'm not sure which one it is, um, of those, like, belt things, um, he'll dub you, like, Worthy Knight or something, and he teaches you the hurricane move. So, getting 10, 11, or 12, however many it is, um of those right off the bat is very, like, essential. Like, get as many as you can right... Oh, eight types of items. Um, get as many as you can, like, right away. Um, you can also get, like, um... I'm gonna say it wrong here, and I know I'm gonna get tons of hate mail for this, but, um... Uh, it's pronounced choo-choo, I pronounce it cha-cha, because that's just how I've pronounced it all my life. So don't judge me, that's just what I'm calling them for this game. Because it's easier to just call them what I've always called them than trying to remind myself that they're choo-choos. Um, you can get cha-cha, you can get cha-cha, um, jelly. You can get, um, those Baboklin things, which I was fighting in, which was that thing that I was fighting. Oh, you just want to come up the ladder here. Which was that thing I was fighting when I saved, um, Tetra. Um, um, they can drop these butterfly pendant things, which use actually, I believe you need, like, 20 of them to get the, um, the, um, Habana deed or something, which is, like, you basically own a little island out in the ocean somewhere, when you can go around anywhere you want. And, um, and you need it to be able to get one of the Triforce charts. You need to own the island just to get one of the Triforce charts. Otherwise, you can't get into the little cabin where there's a hole which leads you down to these sewer things, which is where the turret is. So you need, like, 20 of those. Um, you can also get... Um, feathers from these bird things. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um... Oh, you can get these skull necklaces thing, and all of these serve a purpose. Some, like you eventually, some, the ch the cha cha jellies is um, you can use them to uh make potions when you get to windfall. Um, like I said, for the other two, the butterfly pendants and the other things, I, the skull chain thing or uh, necklace things are uh good for something else. You just can end up trading them for certain things in the game. So it's, and you, uh, and you can hold, like, 99 of each type of item, and there's 8 slots inside your thing, and I think there's only 8 items in the first place, so. So basically, they're trying to figure out how to get me over there without getting caught, so put me in a barrel. 
Oh, this is filming longer than I thought. Maybe because I charged it for a good amount of time. Oh, we're pirates. We do this all the time. Yeah, that's a lie. And you lose your sword for this entire... I'm just gonna call this a mini dungeon. This is the Forsaken Fortress, by the way. I'm gonna call yeah, a mini dungeon. Because it's, it's counted as a real dungeon. But you do not have your sword at all the first time you come here. So that means if you find an enemy... If an enemy catches you... You get sent to a little prison, and it's the same one every time. So if you get caught by an enemy right near the end of the fortress, you get sent all the way back, and you gotta backtrack the whole time. And it takes a long time if you're not good at this. She slipped in this stone thing, which is permanently with you for the game. And she wants it back, but you never give it to her. Um, it lets her talk with you, and eventually, um, another character, which I'll explain later. And it's not used often, it just comes up randomly at certain points, certain, like, specific points. <coughs> I believe both of these are hollow. Yep. Okay, so, there's barrels in this game, and then there's hollow barrels. A hollow barrel, a barrels hold groupies, usually, and other goodies. Hollow barrels are like this, and if you stop moving, you just look like, it just looks like there's a barrel there. If you get caught in this light, you get caught, and you get sent to the prison. You don't want to get caught. I'm going to go for these red rupees, because I'm awesome. Oh, poop. If you need to stop moving any time the lights come near you, or you will get caught, and it is so annoying, it's not even funny. So, basically just move when the light's not near you, and if the light's not near you, you can't get caught. Come over, oh, I almost got hit there. Come over near this, um, the green ones aren't worth it. Come over near this door and just open it. <coughs> <coughs> oh, camera's gonna die. Okay, I might end here, so, um, I will continue Forsaken Fortress in our, in the next video. After I get some rupees, so it's gonna die in there here. Oh, right, no sword. <laughs> I'm stupid. I'm thinking of the second time when you have the master sword. Oh, don't let the rats touch you either. Last bit of advice.